One of the big differences between embroidery and other apparel decoration methods is that embroidery tends to pull a little bit on the material as it's being sewn. A couple of ways to combat that is to have good backing and have good underlay, but there are a couple of other methods that we can use. Let's take a look at those. If I have a circle that is perfect and round and lovely, and I sew it out without stabilizing the area, and sometimes even with, depending on the stretch of the material, you may find that instead of a perfect circle when you sew it out, you have a little bit of a gap and you have more of an egg shape. And you can see that it may even pull in from the borders a little bit. Now I'm mimicking this on screen, but you would see this in those sew outs. What's happening is, as the stitches are being sewn, they're pulling in. So since this has a horizontal stitch direction, the stitches are actually pulling in on the garment this direction. What you may also see is that they push the opposite direction and you may even see some of the underneath stitching behind the border kind of stick out on the ends. So this is what we call push and pull and we deal with this on kind of a regular basis with any shape that has a border or an outline or anything like that or even with lettering you'll notice some lettering is taller and shorter than, than its neighbors and that's because we're trying to compensate for that. So it looks kind of funny on screen when we sew out it lines up. If it looks right on screen, it looks kind of funny in the sew out. So this is what we're doing to um, combat that and we're going to adjust with pull compensation. So let me clear this off the screen and get back to the tool so I can actually interact with Design Shop again. Let me hide this border so that we're just dealing with this circle and let me set this back to normal. So I was just changing this to a number less than 100 to mimic what the sew out actually does. You wouldn't usually do anything like what I just did. Um, instead, what you would do is you would right click and go to properties and you can adjust the pull compensation. So you've got pull comp here, you've got it under that property. You also have it on the property toolbar. I can change it either place. How it works is it multiplies the stitch line by a percentage. So if my stitch line is you know, 10 points long and I multiply it by 110%, I'm going to have an 11 point long stitch line. The longer the stitch line is, the more that it is affected by pull compensation. If I adjust this up to 110%, I can hit apply and you can see just how much more it is affecting the longer stitch lines than it is the shorter stitch lines. The shorter stitch lines it only comes out a little bit from the edge. The idea of pull compensation is that it will extend beyond the wireframe line so that when it sews out and it pulls in, it will pull in to match that line. So you're kind of guessing a little bit about how much is this material going to pull and how much are these stitches going to pull in and am I going to line up with my border. One thing that I do uh, occasionally is I will look at the edge of my border. So let's take this out of 3D and let's turn this on. If I'm dealing with a border like this, instead of going out way past that, I will just come out almost to the edge of my border and maybe a point or two past it, depending on the stretch of my material. And that way, when it sews out, it will pull in just to the inside of my border hopefully. And again, I'm going to use underlay and good backing to prevent as much of that pull as possible. But if I have to compensate it for it, I've got some tools to do so. So pull compensation is meant mostly for the adjustment of pull of the stitches. There are some other tools that are used for thickening up or lengthening those stitch lines, and they do so a little bit more evenly. These are typically used for making smaller letters look better or thinner elements look a little bit beefier. That would be pull, comp, uh, no, pull offset. So let's take a look at that. Let me go into my other project. Let's take a look at this lettering. So I have some die-in script up here. It is at one inch tall. If I shrink this down to a half an inch <clears throat> and I zoom in, I can see that on the inside of my E, some of the stitches are missing. And what's happening is Design Shop is filtering out every other stitch. The inside of that E is actually falling smaller than the diameter of my needle. In fact, it's down to five points wide, and typically my diameter of my needle is about seven to eight points wide. It is falling smaller than the diameter of that needle, which means if I keep stitching at that size, I'm probably gonna get some thread breaks. 
Design Shop is filtering out every other stitch in an attempt to lengthen those stitch lines out and get you through the sew out without breaking a thread. However, it's probably gonna look a little bit thin and I may wanna thicken that up a little bit. Let's take a look at how to do that. If I right click and I go to Properties, I could adjust using Pull Compensation. So let me zoom out for a second. Let's duplicate this so we have an original to compare to. So here we have the original. Let's go to the one that we're going to adjust. Let's zoom in and take a look. I'm going to measure with my ruler the thinnest part. So I can click and drag across the form. You can see that it is five points wide. I know that I want it to be at least 10 points wide. If I'm new, I probably want it to be at least 12 points wide. So in order to adjust that, I'm going to adjust with my pull comp. And we'll take a look at the difference between pull comp and pull offset. If I were multiplying five points by a percentage to get to 10 points, that percentage would be 200%. Five times 200% equals 10. That is now thick enough to sew as soon as I hit apply. And I can measure that. Come across, I'm 10 points wide. That's exactly what I was looking for. This is now thick enough to sew. However, because let me put that in 3D. Because the percentage used with pull compensation multiplies those stitch lines, it affects the wider areas far more quickly than the thinner areas. And when we're dealing with small lettering like this, we're really trying to affect the thinner areas first. The narrow areas did get affected. However, the wider areas of the M are starting to become very, very thick. They're starting to smash into each other and they're starting to close in that shape. So let's find another way to do this. Let me grab that original. I will duplicate that with just Control D on my keyboard. And I'll move this down so we get another option. All right. Let's go into Properties. And let's take a look at another way to do this. Pull Comp. We've got Pull Compensation. We know that adjusts by multiplying by a percentage. We could also, or instead, use pull offset. Pull offset used by, uh, works by adding a point to either side of that stitch line. So if this keyboard, keyboard were my stitch line and I put a one in that field, it would add one point to one side and one point to the other. So if this were five points wide and I added one, it would add one to the other side. So I would end up with something that was seven points wide. If I added two, it would be nine points wide. That's getting really close to where I want, but not quite close enough. So I'm going to add three to make it 11 points wide. So I'm going to go into my pull offset. I'm going to increase this number to three. That's going to add three again to each side. So I hit apply. And now this is 11 points wide in the thinnest part. And it is now thick enough to sew. However, my M is not closing in on itself. It is thick enough to sew, thick enough to see, but it's not closing in. It's not being nearly as marshmallow-esque as if I were using pull comp. So there's um, a nice way to handle small lettering. There is one other way to deal with this. If I go into properties, I can go into pull comp. And if I have a file that is just giving me fits and I'm getting thread breaks and I'm dealing with a lot of smaller areas and I just, I'm pretty sure that it's because I'm dealing with stitches that are smaller than my needle, I can go in and change my minimum column width to 10. What that will do is it will go through the file and make sure that no stitches are smaller than 10 points wide in a column or a multi-stitch line element, so a fill or a column or anything like that. When I hit apply, it will make sure that everything is at least 10 points wide. However, I did lose the look of my typeface a little bit. I have very squared off ends and I lost the thick and thin. So of these three, the bottom one is definitely my favorite to use. I've got a minimum column width on the top, and that's great for troubleshooting. Is this what's giving me the issue? I've got pull compensation on the middle one. Pull compensation is great for compensating for the pull of stitches, but for making smaller letters sew a little bit better, it's not my favorite tool. Pull offset adjusts by using addition, so it affects everything evenly, and I can affect the small areas just as quickly and as easily as the wider areas and that tends to work well for making smaller letters look quite a bit better. Let's zoom in and see those differences. So now we have three 
different forms of how to manipulate these stitch lines, make them big enough to sew. And they should all be tools in your toolbox to help avoid thread breaks and get small letters sewing well and get uh, circular shapes actually looking like circles instead of eggs and getting your borders to line up.